So the, uh, this trade here that I want to go over is for, let me see, this is for Friday. Uh, this is July 22, 2022. <laughs> and so this is a trade that I took uh, recently. Now, I do like to do a top-down analysis of this. So let me go ahead and see if I can pull this up. Let me see if I can pull this up just a little more. I can. I want to see my time frames here. Uh, so I have my 240-minute chart. And obviously, you're going to see a bunch of jitter and lines being showing here on, my, on, on this area. You may think it's a bunch of uh, jibber-jabber, but... For me, I understand it, and so, you know, it is what it is. I'm just going to be going over my own analysis, and I'm actually a contrarian trader, um, is what you'd call it. Uh, however, I do follow ICT concepts, and <clears throat> I will say that uh, I know he's very big on going with the trend, and I am too, in, in higher time frames. So, for example, here are my daily time frames that I like to have, right? And so I do follow that. However, uh, in the smaller time frames, I'm always a a contrarian trader, and I do trade with the the higher time frame trend, if that makes sense. <laughs> a bit of a tongue twister for some, maybe. But anyways, so this was on the once again this was Friday. I was looking at a few area levels where the market could have gone into. And so you can see on my on the 240 minute, uh, there was double tops here. There was also a double tops here that market looked like it was going into, and it did. Eventually, it did. There was some news that came out, and I believe that was uh, it wasn't seven. Yeah, so there was news around 6:45. It was flash services PMI, um, and that ended up causing this this big run up in here and so <clears throat> this is what market will always try to do around news time it'll uh it'll actually go in the direction that it'll want to take out stops uh and in this case you can see these areas being taken out really nice and so this is actually where i went ahead and pulled the trigger so you can see here on my 15 minute i always like to look at uh, I always do a top-down analysis, and what that means is I start from the daily, 240, 60, 15-minute, and then my trading time frames are either 5, 2, or 1. Um, my favorite one, really, when it comes to placing the trade is the 5-minute, but if I can see a 5-minute and a 2-minute align together, then that just gives me the confidence to take the trade. So anyway, so on the 15-minute, um, oh, and by the way, too, so for, for me, my strategy, if my setup develops on every single time frame. Um, it's just, you know, if it's a 60 minute or 240 minute, I, I look at that and there's fractals that happen uh, in the smaller time frames that the same thing will develop in the direction of the same setup. So I hope that didn't confuse any of you. But anyways, <clears throat> in this case, um, I was looking at this in the 15 minutes. Once I draw my lines on the higher intraday time frames, 60 or 240, I go down to my 15 minute. And this is this is really the one that I keep an eye on. I always keep it here because I'm more. I already drew my lines from the bigger time frames. Um, I'll explain in other videos what my orange and red lines mean, um, and and I'll keep going. So here you can see a 15 minute. Once again, I always wait for news and see what's going on because that's always when news comes out. Is usually you know where the market wants to go to to take out stops, pretty much take out people that have stops orders or also um, you know big huge traders uh, that have you know place that have placed trades and are, wick, are are looking to take profit targets out and so me as since I'm a contrarian what I like to do is I like to trade against that so once this area here gets fulfilled then I'm gonna trade in the opposite direction and so that's what I like to do that's where I come in so on the five minute here uh, my rules are very specific, and by the way, once again, you can see these horizontal lines are in every time frame, and all these mean something specifically. So, for example, here, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., this is actually a London trading time zone. Um, 
by the way, this is all part of my rules. And if you want to know what my rules are or stuff like that, uh, drop me a comment or something and you just do like a, a doc or something and just send it to you guys. Other than that, you could just go to ICT and just look, look it up and if you see the rules for yourself. Um, he'll definitely show you what to do. Mines are actually just very specific. It's not a, it's, the way he explains it, it's, it's pretty much the same. It's just mines are a little bit more specific. And this is just, this is just something that I do because when it comes to trading, there's just so much flexi, you know, flexibility and so many things that your eye will, will tell you when it comes to looking at prices. And you can really get, um, a sidetracked if you, if you, if you don't keep it consistent and that's really why I have my rules set up in place and so just because I see this particular setup here that was created that was formed um, it doesn't mean that I'm just gonna continue taking it just because it, it looks similar right like there's this there's a reason why I took this right um, and so anyways so here's the trade that I took uh, you can see the market came into this new time zone we ended up taking out the highs here which is right there by the way, a high, the way I classify that is how ICT explains it, which is one lower low to the left and one lower low to the right. In this case, it's a it's a trend going up. OK, it would be the opposite for the down for the down candles for the downtrend. Excuse me. Um, so, for example, this is a high here that was taken and then a low that was taken as well right here. So a low, you got a lower high to the left and a lower high to the right. That classifies it as a low right here. And so you can see here, this low was broken. And then the market came right back up. Once that happens, I like to draw my Fibonacci extension. And I know I have a few levels here, but let me just make it simple. I will go to a 50% um, rule. So what I like to do is once that happens here and this breaks, um, I like to draw my Fibonacci tool and I will place my trade at the 50% level. Now, when the market is going, um, it's usually pretty quick. And so I ended up getting filled around 40, 41, 42 or something like that, especially because the market just shoots up pretty quick. And so you never really know if it's actually going to go up here, like how it did here when it literally went up to like 48. I was, I was negative in the trade. Not that much, um, probably about like seven or so, six points down or something. Um, you can see my oops, my ruler, my ruler tool. I was around, I wouldn't say five, I would say around six or seven. I was around negative six, seven points. Uh, mind you, my stop was above here, so I had about negative 20 uh, pips, right? And so let me just go back here to my default template. Go back to my default. Now I like to add my default because my default is the one that measures my target and that is that negative 50% here. That's target one for me. Um, as a matter of fact, that's my only target. I only have one target. For those of you that like to take extra targets, that's up to you. This was a short day. So what could have been the 38 points, by the way, uh, I did end up taking out uh, some, again, taking out around 20 points right here. 20, it was around 20 points. That's really what I did. Uh, the reason why um, I do have a life, and so <laughs> I did ended up closing it out. So that's the reason why I closed it out. Uh, there was nothing really specific. Um, you know, I, I could have waited if I would have been here in front of my screen, but I had to leave, and so I ended up closing it. And I did not want to leave my trade open with my with risk involved, um, and just keeping my stop at you know 20 points when I'm already 20 points in profit. Uh, I figured, you know what, this was already the last day of the challenge and all I needed to do was to be in profit and that's exactly what happened here. So I was able to get back in profit and be able to get ready for the next challenge. Um, and, you know, let's see what, what the month of August brings. You, let's just keep going. Uh, anyways, if you like this video, definitely uh, if you want to watch my progress with the FDMO challenge, then definitely I encourage you to... Uh, like or just follow and uh and hopefully you enjoy what you see until next time